for joining us. Good afternoon. Thanks for uh, having me. So, so, so often we've, we've talked about whether there'll be a wave of banking M&A uh, unleashed. We've seen it pick up and tick along over the last few months. Is, is this going to be a pace that continues, it, it's peaked, or, or is this the start of a, a real acceleration? I think it's going to continue. Actually, the wave was happening pre-COVID, and then COVID stopped everything. It literally ground to a halt. And I think that the pressures that were in place pre-COVID are actually stronger now today than they were then. Uh, mainly, the, uh, the, you can see the bigger banks are becoming more profitable. profitable. Uh, size is driving profitability. There's more of a need, I think, to cut costs because uh, revenues haven't been growing quite as I think as folks would have expected. And also, too, there's a big need for uh, investment in technology. So we think that this is going to be, I, I'd call it steady. I don't know if there'll be a giant burst, but I think that the window is open again for consolidation post the depths of the, of the recession from the pandemic. In, in terms of more deals of this sort of size, or could we see something bigger? Clearly, we've seen Truist formed. We, we've seen PNC involved in a deal. Will it only ever be banks that are smaller than them that do any more M&A? No, I, I think we're in a new phase where the M&A is getting bigger. It won't be the big four, of course, because they're at the deposit cap and can't grow by, by statute. But I think it's going to get bigger because I think pre-COVID, the industry thought that the technology industry was somewhat of a competitor. Now that we're getting towards the end of the COVID recession, there's a view that the technology industry is a much bigger competitive. This whole customer adoption of, of digital engagement, I think, is making even the bigger banks think that they need to get a little bit bigger to be able to take on some of the larger technology companies. Tom, what does it mean for consumers if their local or regional banks start, start merging and we, we see all of this consolidation? I think it's better. I think it's better because I think that the whole idea Why? is more digital capabilities to serve these customers because just fewer customers want to go to branches. It's not all about the branches. And I think that these regional banks will be able to stand up and be more competitive with the big four. I think because there's a big public debate about should the big banks get bigger if, if bigger banks couldn't get bigger, then we'll end up with four big banks. What we really need are four more big banks to challenge the four banks we have, and that will drive more customer choice. And I think we'll actually end up being more pro-consumer than just solidifying everything where it is today. And I, and I also think, too, that what's helping this is that we've had a really big move in the bank stocks, and we think that there's room to go still. And, and I think that the, the stocks recovering from where we were last year is also helping, helping to fuel this. Tom, it's been reported in quite a few places over the last 24 hours that HSBC uh, is considering or will uh, exit its U.S. retail banking operation. Is that an asset that will be bought by somebody? Is it an attractive asset? Uh, or, or is it harder to carve that out? Uh, and, and will it just likely be, be snowballed and, and shut down? So because I can speak a little bit about this means that we're not working on this, of course. So just, so just from a big picture, because if we were, I couldn't talk about it. But from a big picture, I'm not surprised that the big global banks are honing their franchises to be more profitable. Citigroup recently was talked about they're going to sell some of their overseas operations. So that's not surprising. Uh, the industry is awash with liquidity right now. All the triple P money that's been put into the industry, a lot of it is sitting in deposits around the country. So the view is, is that deposits aren't being sold for a very high price. And there's also not a great demand for branches. I think it could be sold, but I wouldn't expect it to go for a big price because that's just where we are right now in the cycle. Tom, bank stocks have been hot lately, up another 1% today. Now the second best performing sector of the year. What could get in the way of that rally? Well, uh, I'll tell you, I, right now it feels pretty strong. Uh, I, I can tell you what's supporting the rally and why we think it's going to go higher. Uh, the, the interest rates on the 10-year moving the way they are and giving steepness to the yield curve is probably going to help earnings estimates going forward. The fact that we might get another trillion nine of, of stimulus takes credit quality off the table even further for the banks. Plus, we think earnings estimates are probably likely going to be too low because of the fact that you're going to see reserve releases. And we've got capital piling up, which could help consolidation as well as, I think, share repurchase, even though I think that's becoming a little bit less fruitful as these stocks go up. So I think there are a lot of factors, and I'll even leave you with one more. While bank stocks have now recovered 
all of their valuation is measured by a price to book pr since the, the COVID crisis. Relative to the market, they're trading at a 30 to 40 percent discount. And I think you saw it today. You saw how, how growth was selling off, value was coming back. I think on a relative perspective, you could still see these stocks working higher. Um, and that's, that's, that's why we continue to, to like in, uh, many of the stocks in the sector. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.